All right, guys. So, in the last section, we're going to just review what we looked at in class recently on mitosis and meiosis. And these drawings are pretty simple and straightforward, but I just want to bring your attention to some key aspects of the whole process. So, for example, here we're looking at a cell that has a diploid number of 4, and we can compare and contrast mitosis with meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now, immediately you can see that meiosis 2 is pretty similar in some attributes to mitosis in that we have chromosomes that line up top to bottom and so forth. So here we have a diploid number of four. That just means you start off with four chromosomes, all right? Now these chromosomes can be replicated like we see right here, right? Those are replicated chromosomes. And that just means you have both sides of the X. So together we have two sister chromatids, right? So those are both sides or arms of the chromosome. As well, we also have a large set and a small set of these chromosomes. Now the large set is one from mom and one from dad. So we can say the mom is purple and the dad is red or orange in this case. And so you have a homologous pair or homologs from mom and dad for long. This could also be chromosome number one, two, three, eight, nine. It doesn't matter. In either case, we have a set of large chromosomes and a set of small chromosomes. And for mitosis, you have replicated chromosomes because you had your DNA replicated in the S phase of interphase inside of your cells. And what's going to happen is in the beginning of prophase, you have your nuclear envelope dissolving, and then they're going to undergo certain movements so that you can make copies of your cell. Now, in metaphase, we know that the chromosomes line up in the middle, and they can line up in any random order, it doesn't matter. So you can see here that you have the large chromosome from mom on top, the large chromosome from dad on the bottom, doesn't matter, is not important. Now, in anaphase, we can see we split those chromosomes in half and temporarily doubled the number of chromosomes inside of the cell. So here we have a diploid number of four, right? We started off with four chromosomes. But in anaphase, if you count the number of things or total chromosomes inside of the cell, we have eight of these chromosomes, right? So now we have eight chromosomes in anaphase of mitosis. The whole point of that is so that when we split this cell in half, we end up with four separate chromosomes. Now, this cell is also diploid because it has one, two, three, four chromosomes just like we started off with. However, these chromosomes are not replicated. We haven't doubled that amount of DNA or made two arms on that chromosome because we haven't started this process of mitosis over and over. Now, a key thing to remember is that mitosis is done by somatic cells, right? All cells in your body do this, with the exception of reproductive cells, which undergo meiosis, and mature brain cells, and mature or, or nerve tissue in general, and mature muscle cells. Now, in meiosis 1, we still have these same four chromosomes, right? But we have some unique things occurring. The first is that these chromosomes come together. That's called synapsis. They synapse with each other. They come close together. Then they exchange this genetic material in this crossing over. Now, if we were to show this crossing over through the rest of this, and I'll do this as we go through here, you could see that there would be some exchange of genetic material. That is, one of these arms would constantly have genetic material exchanged with it. And we could draw that on each one of these chromosomes, just like we did in class. And throughout this entire process, you keep track of the fact that a lot of this genetic material has changed throughout this whole process in meiosis. So, we've made unique individuals. Just to show you real quick where this diversity was generated. And you can see this in each one of these cells. So back to the beginning, meiosis 1. We have replicated chromosomes. We still have four, just like we did at the beginning of mitosis here, right? So in prophase one, remember, numbers, ding, 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 super important to draw out. And remember, because that's what dictates the details of each one of these steps. Now, we have four chromosomes. Now, in meiosis one, 
In metaphase 1, these chromosomes line up side to side. These homologous pairs line up with each other, okay? Then, the order in which they line up, not important. That's random assortment, right? Here we have mom's chromosome on the left, dad's chromosome on the right for the long pair, but the short pair has the opposite arrangement. So, anaphase, we simply split those chromosomes in half, and in telophase 1, we have haploid cells, that is, cells that have half the number of the original DNA displayed, or the original chromosome number that was in the cell, and we still have replicated chromosomes, right? Now we're just going to do that whole process over in meiosis 2, but instead we're going to line those chromosomes up top to bottom. So we have our chromosomes lined up top to bottom in metaphase 2, just like in metaphase of mitosis. Now here we have half the number of chromosomes, which is important, but meiosis 2 is making sure to make these chromosomes unreplicated. So, Beginning of meiosis 2, prophase 2, we have our replicated chromosomes, hapo haploid in nature, that is, they have half the number of chromosomes as they originally did at the beginning of meiosis, and here we're going to line these up top to bottom, and we're going to split them in half, and so you can see again, we've actually doubled our chromosome number for a brief period in anaphase 2 of meiosis 2, and now for one quick moment we have four chromosomes, just like we did in the beginning. But that's just so that in telophase 2, we can split those chromosomes into separate cells, cytokinesis, and we end up with different chromosomes in each one of these cells. Totally different because diversity was generated from crossing over, also from a random assortment of your chromosomes in the way they line up in metaphase and in the way your parents met, right? Those are the ways that we generate genetic diversity. So that's all of the different stages of cell division together. Now it's important to remember the way this actually works in people. So here in mitosis we have this happening in most of our cells, right? But in meiosis, remember, meiosis occurs in males at puberty. Literally, we start this whole process and then you finish here in telophase 2 of meiosis 2. So in theory, I mean, these once they mature could just be spermatozoa, which are just mature sperm cells, right? So in telophase 2 of meiosis 2 is where you would see these mature sperm cells. Now for a female, we would have one of these as a simple and large ova or egg with two chromosomes inside of it or the haploid number that we started off with because the other three cells that we created were polar bodies that were just absorbed to make a big healthy egg because it needed all of the extra cytoplasm that it could get a hold of, okay? Now, that's cell division. Pretty simple, straightforward. If you are able to keep track of these diagrams, you know what is diploid, what is haploid, what chromatids are, that they're held together by centromeres, um, what homologous pairs are. Keeping track of that terminology is super straightforward once you are able to draw these diagrams and schematics and arguably quite a bit more simple than cellular respiration and photosynthesis. In addition to that, remember some things that we can't draw diagrams for that we also discussed in class are applications of cellular respiration. It's really important to remember some of the supplements that we discussed like the fact that there's different ways to cut calories and which uh, supplements have been proven to be effective that we actually discussed in class. You'll need to go back and review those because that's super important. And remember another important thing or another few important things we did in applications of cellular respiration is we reviewed type 1 and type 2 diabetes and we also reviewed calculating caloric intakes and concentrations based on that. So for example we did that problem in class where we discussed the burger that was made out of fat and you need to know the concentrations or caloric concentrations for biologically important molecules. Nine calories per gram on fat, four calories per gram for proteins and carbohydrates, and the rest of that is just simple math and straightforward from there. Be sure to go back, look over your lecture guides, rewatch this video if you like, watch any extra videos that are on Moodle if that helps you understand these things as well. And then if you're still confused, go back and look at PowerPoints for anything you're missing on your lecture guides. And if you can go through these schematics, then you should feel pretty comfortable with the material on your exam.
Feel free to also shoot me an email with any questions that you may have on any of the material that we've talked about so far in these different video reviews or in any of the material on lecture guides, reading guides, PowerPoints, anything like that, and I will email you as soon as I get to your email. So with that, good luck studying, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday. All right?